evening. I'm Christy Picard, and I'm the mayor for New Baden. Tonight, we have the pleasure of being able to interview all of the uh, mayoral candidates that are gonna be up for election in April. I am so excited about this, and I wanna say a few thank yous um, to the people that have made this possible. First, um, Tom and Patty Murdoch um, have put a lot of time and effort um, into getting these this organized, um, and we really appreciate that. I really wanna thank the candidates for taking their time and coming to answer the questions tonight. Um, this will really help the residents get to know you better and be able to make some informed votes um, in April. And then last but certainly not least, I wanna um, thank the residents here in New Baton for um, participating and submitting questions. Your involvement in this election is critical um, as we go forward. So I really, we all really appreciate your involvement in this. So now I just want to explain how this is going to be done a little bit um, for tonight. So we have the questions broke out into five different categories. The first category is a general category, and then we're going to talk about public safety, fiscal responsibility, infrastructure, community. And then there's going to be a moment where I'll be able to ask the candidates specific questions that were asked to them that were um, provided by the residents of New Baden. And then finally, we'll allow each of the candidates to make a closing statement. So again, thank you to everybody that was involved for making this possible, and um, I look forward to hearing the candidates' response. Thank you. Hi, Randy, thanks for being here tonight. Thank you. Um, we're gonna start our questions off with the general section of the questions. Um, the first question um, is about leadership. Um, leadership skills are essential for a mayor to be successful. To that end, we have a three-part question related to leadership. How do you define leadership? Okay, let me start off by saying uh, that I, I thank you for doing your part uh, in tonight's activities and Patty and uh, your husband, Dan. And um, I'd like to thank you, first of all, for all that you've done for the city over the last 12 years, I believe, as a trustee and a, and a mayor, and uh, certainly didn't do it for money. Yeah. And I know you're a very busy person, especially with the pandemic and, you know, your medical issues that you've had the last year, so I know it's been tough for you. And I thank you for that. And I know we've had some disagreements, but we've always been able to talk to each other. So thank you once again. So. Okay. So um, as far as defining leadership, I mean, I guess it depends on the situation you're in. You know, if you're working on, you know, a, a, let's say you're a police chief or if you're a public works manager or something, every circumstance is, is different. Uh, certainly you're gonna treat some people differently. Uh, you know, if there's an urgent matter that deals with something uh, and you're dealing with your people that are under you, you might have a shorter response or a more direct response on what you want your people to do. I think it's important that you train your people properly, that you reward them properly, you pat them on the back when they need a pat, a pat on the back. Uh, sometimes they might need a kick in the butt. You gotta do all that. And it's not always pleasant, as I'm sure you know. So uh, let me take my readers here real quick and make sure I haven't missed anything. Um, you need to resolve issues that come up, needs that people come up with. You know, people are always having issues with their family life and other things that are not just the job that they're currently doing for you. So uh, within the city, you know, there's a lot of different things. The police department, public works, fire department, the ambulance department, the office here. There's a lot of different barriers and there's some really good people that we have working for us in town. I'm sure uh, a lot of people admit that. So that always makes your job easier when you got good people working for you and not so easy when you don't. So uh, I'm hoping that we can establish relationships and we can all get along and, and work for the betterment of the city. Okay, thank you. Um, what do you believe are your strongest leadership skills? Um, well, once again, it depends on the situation, but I'd like to get involved in whatever issue is happening. Uh, you know, if you're talking about new vehicles for the public works department, you know, a lot of people were um, were against buying a new vehicle, for instance. Well, the thing was rusted out. It was falling. The vehicle replaced, in my term, is, is what I'm specifically talking about. Uh, 
I mean, it, it was done. We needed to get rid of it. So that was an easy decision. Um, other things like, uh, you know, the amulets. We had a need for new amulets. I was, as one of my past jobs, I was a commercial truck manager at some Chevy dealers and GMC dealers in California and Arizona. And I dealt with municipalities on things like service vehicles and uh, all that stuff. So I, and I was, um, I sold a lot of vehicles to different communities and I knew a lot about those. That was something that I was good at. So whenever that question came up in town when we were looking for new amulets, I got involved in it. I researched what chassis do we need? What engine do we need? Uh, and I made a decision that was not agreed on by the, by the other members of the board. And they spent $60,000 more than I felt that we need to spend. That was my opinion. I'm not saying it was right, but I think I have a little bit more knowledge than anybody that was on the board or, you know, I mean, I researched it. I, I had a lot of questions that I looked into and my, my recommendation was turned down. I mean, I would think if you're going to err on the side of something that you would err on the side of saving money for the city. It didn't go that way. Now, certainly you want a quality product. You don't want to put them in junk, especially in an ambulance or a police car for that matter. So, um, you know, you, you got to have something that's good. But the vehicle that I was talking about was all new chassis, all new everything, exactly the same as what we ended up purchasing. So it would have been just as dependable. So uh, that's an area where things didn't go my way. And that's fine. So, hold on. Um, that's it. I think that'll answer that. Okay. Um, the final question about leadership is where do you feel um, within your leadership do you feel you need to strengthen? Well, in today's world, technology. Um, anybody that watches me on Facebook or trying to do anything on a computer or anything like that, I, I know nothing about a lot of this stuff and I get lost in it. I mean, Patty can probably attest to that. We've had discussions about it. Uh, and another problem I have is I can't see as well, so to even look on a telephone and stuff, I have to wear glasses and in low light conditions, I, I just can't read. And then as far as, I mean, I can't even upload a picture of me on, on Facebook, like that's a big deal, but I guess it seems to be nowadays. So I'd say technology is an area I definitely need to improve in. Uh, as far as working with people, I need, to, I need to learn how to sugarcoat or pamper or whatever word you want to use to describe how you deal with people. I need to soften it up, I, I realize that. But I was a 20 year Navy man, and when you're in the military, sometimes you don't talk to people the way that you should. You know, uh, you know, if somebody didn't do something the way you wanted, you know, you could tell them, hey, give me 20 push-ups or whatever. You know, you can't do that nowadays, so I, I just need to, to learn how to, to be a little bit nicer is probably the best word to say it. And it's something I'm aware of, and something I promise to work on. Thanks, Randy. Um, in addition to leadership, what do you believe are other required traits of being the mayor? And how does your experience make you qualified for the position? Um, my experience is, is rounded. I mean, I've done a lot of different things in my life. Certainly, I'm a lot older than, uh, than the other two candidates. Um, you know, I think the military does give you a lot of good qualities and ways to handle things that you would never imagine. You know, I mean, I, I worked on a flight deck carrier, a flight deck of an aircraft carrier, which anybody who wants to Google or YouTube vid videos of that, how all that stuff goes down, it's amazing. And, and to think that we've got 18 year old kids doing that all over the world, 24 hours a day with loaded bombs, missiles, fuel, all kinds of things that'll hurt you. Um, you know, it's, it's an amazing thing. So uh, did I address the other part? Um, yeah, you talked about your um, uh, experience. So yes, I think you did. Yeah. Um, well, let me, let me continue then. With, after the military, I, um, I sold cars for a little bit, as I said, and commercial trucks. And um, then I did a thing where I started working for FedEx. And um, as a home delivery contractor, a lot of people don't know that FedEx are, any, a lot of FedEx is independent contractors. Some of us are employees to, to FedEx, but a lot of the the other routes are like, um, kind of like bread routes. You know, everybody, they're like franchises where you own your own business. And I did that out in Arizona for about 12 years. Um, I was the largest contractor in Phoenix for several years. And um, it was pretty detailed. You have to have a vehicle ready 
to work. You have to take care of your people. They have to be there. You have to make sure that all their little areas are covered. And uh, I learned a lot from that. And, uh, and I did pretty well at it. And then I moved back here to New Baden and took over another FedEx business and uh, did that pretty well for a short period of time, which was what I wanted to do. I didn't want to do it. I was done. I was ready to retire and uh, got the business squared away because it had some issues and sold it to uh, Orlando Pace, the pro football player. So. Uh, okay. Um, what steps would you take to ensure that all pertinent information is presented in a non-biased, understandable manner so that the village trustees can make an informed decision? Okay, well, obviously you're not going to share everything with the board members. There's some things I know that you've kept from us, and rightfully so. I'm not saying that you did anything out of the sort there. Um, but, you know, some personnel matters, I would think, should probably be kept a little bit quieter. But then after they're resolved, if you can share it with the board members, then it should be shared with all the board members, not just one. And uh, I think there was a lot of that that didn't happen in the past. You know, I mean... Some people got a lot more information than I got. Maybe I got some that they didn't get. I don't know. You know, you only know what you know. So uh, I, I think transparency is a good thing. So I'm sure a lot of people said that tonight besides just me. You know, I'm all about transparency too. I wish that we could videotape and uh, all this stuff and, and put it out on Facebook. So what are you guys doing next week? Hey, I'll prove it. <laughs> okay. If you, um, vote, if you vote for me, no, you can't. You can't vote. For me. <laughs> okay. Um, what do you feel are the biggest concerns for New Baden, both at the present moment and in the future, and how will you go about addressing these issues? Well, obviously, taxes are a big deal. Um, you know, anybody that's followed anything with the elections and stuff like that. We, I mean, if you don't think our federal taxes are going to go up, I mean, they have to with all the spending and stuff that's going on. You know, they're going to come after some more of our money. Uh, statewide with the state of Illinois people are leaving here in the you know by the truckloads because of taxes and uh, and the school board with the issues that they've had with the virtual learning and mask and all that stuff I mean they have to raise what they get I mean and maybe they're getting some funding from the state and I think they have but you know they're always gonna go after more and then uh, you know with the city I mean if you look at the past several years our taxes have gone up 5%, 4%. I mean, it's always gone up some. And there's reasons for that. I'm not denying that. And, uh, I mean, one year we went up 20%. And it doesn't go back down when you increase the tax levy 20%. It's 20% next year and the year after, right? So, uh, you know, it's, it's like to lower your taxes, you have to stop spending money. You can't spend more money. We don't do it at home. We don't. Well, some maybe some people do, but you don't go out and spend money on things that you can't afford to pay for. And we're spending your money on things that, and we'll get into a little bit later about things that I just don't disagree that or don't agree with that we need for the city. So uh, that's one of the biggest areas that I'm all about. I've been very vocal at meetings, as people will tell you about what my thoughts are on spending. And we'll get into some of them later, like I said, but I've been very adamant. I've been in the newspaper because of my thoughts on different things. And, you know, several people, well, one person on the board, when he doesn't agree with me and, and he thinks that I'm making a good point about something, he'll tell me to move on. Okay, I'm representing a lot of the citizens, of, well, all the citizens of New Baden, and they have a voice, and I'm going to stand up for it. And I don't want to get political, but this is political. If you drive around town, you'll see a lot of my signs in people's yards where people at least agree with me and support me. So when you're telling me to move on, you're telling them to move on and not be representative of them, and that's wrong. And I give the mayor credit. She's done a pretty good job of controlling that when it does get heated sometimes. So, I mean, we're all going to be okay after this. Whether I get elected or Taylor or Raphael, whatever happens, we're going to be okay. You know, we just got to move ahead and try to do the best we can for the city. Okay. How would you support the New Baden Police Department in keeping the village of New Baden and our officers safe? Okay, as far as keeping, uh, keeping New Baden safe, we've got a, a good police department that uh, does a good job. Uh, crime rate is very low in New Baden, as everybody knows. Um, we did have a murder arrest recently by uh, Officer Carson. 
and uh, a Clinton County policeman, I believe. And uh, that was great. I'm just glad to see that. Um, I didn't think it got publicized that much. I mean, we should have been very proud of that. And, and maybe it did. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I know we kind of like to keep things quiet around uh, the town about different things and stuff. But um, So, I mean, I think we're doing a good job. We've got some good citizens here. We don't really have a lot of, uh, of problems with stuff. But I will tell you one thing, that if we do start to have a problem with drugs, I'm going to be all over it because um, of things that have happened in my past. So. Uh, I can promise you that, that if, if drugs become a problem, and, and it is starting to be around. I mean, it is in town. We did have a drug bust a couple weeks ago. Um, so I'm all, I'd be all over that. I can promise you that. Um, as far as other things in town, I'm a little bit disappointed in the fact that we only gave out 10 speeding tickets last year when uh, it seems like there's always a problem. If you go stand out here all day long, there's trucks especially it seems like trucks I don't know why maybe it just appears they're going faster but I mean people speed on this road all the time and it's it's an issue it's a safety issue uh, Clinton County Road go stand over there and, and I have talked to the chief about it and he has done some enforcement over on County Line Road I, I will give him that but it still happens so you know maybe some people need to get some tickets I would rather have, have warnings and then kind of slow it down a little bit but I mean 10 so I don't want 150 or 200 or 300 either. You know, I mean, let's try to work with the people in town and stuff. But it's a, um, I think that's all I have to say about that. Um, what are your thoughts on officer training? And do you think diversity training needs to be required? I would say in today's world, diversity training definitely needs to be taught. And, and you know, it could be an issue. I mean, it's a different world nowadays than it's been in the past. Um, as far as officer training, yeah, they need definitely need training in a variety of areas. I mean, they handle calls that we wouldn't even imagine. You know, I mean, it's they go through things, and and the same thing for the for the uh, the ambulance people. I mean, can you imagine pulling up on a car accident where a child has been injured or killed? They have to deal with that. So not only training they should receive. I mean, sometimes they might need some counseling help. I mean, that's something that's hard to swallow. I don't care who you are. So, uh, yeah, I mean, they need training in a lot of areas. Uh, and, and I'm sure they get it. I mean, I don't think we've ever turned down any requests for any training that, you know, the chief has brought to us. So, you know, I, I think we're in pretty good shape as far as training. And, and uh, I think we should cover everything, you know. All right. Um with the new Baden Fire Protection District operating as a separate entity, how do you plan to increase continuity between the village and the fire protection district? Well, I'm pretty good friends with most of the members on the board. Um, I do talk to the chief once in a while, not as much as I used, I used to see him at the Legion all the time, so I talk to Ken. Um, I try to get up there on Mondays when they have meetings and say hi, and, you know, I mean, I brought them pizza before, and I'd bring them a beer if they'd let me, but they won't let me, I guess. They, um, but you know, I think that our firemen honestly should get paid more than what, for what they do. I mean, they go out, they work jobs, they get calls at two o'clock in the night and have to go out there and then go to work the next day and whatever. And they do it for literally nothing. They probably spend more money on fuel, going to the meetings and going to the calls and stuff than they get paid. So, I mean, I would be, well, I can't tell the fire district what to do, but, uh, you know, I think they need to be rewarded. I mean, they, they do a lot of good for the town. Um, you know, as far as the board members go, like I said, Rodney uh, Lacaz is on there. He's a good friend of mine, obviously. Uh, I spend a lot of time talking to Rodney and have dinner with his family every Wednesday night. Uh, some of my closest friends. Uh, Ted Honor is on there. I know him, have conversations with him. Uh, Dickie Stump I see every day and have conversations with him. Uh, Chris, I don't know as well as I do the rest of them. And I think that's it. Is there another member I'm forgetting right now? Yeah. So I think we do. I think our firemen do a good job. I mean, by the time they get to some places, sometimes my brother always jokes that they've been saving foundations since 1920 or what you know. It is what it is. I mean, it, it, you know, there's, we do the best we can with what we got. So. 
Okay, thank you, Randy. Um, we're going to go ahead and move into the fiscal responsibility section. Okay. Okay, so the first question is, all of the mayoral candidates have had experience as a New Baden trustee. What has been your specific history related to tax-related votes? Well, I'm not crazy about raising taxes, but every year when the, the vote comes up, in the past, there's been things we've tried to, there's certain areas that are, taxes are levied for a certain area. And the money that was coming in for those um, different funds didn't always cover that fund. So we've adjusted that in the past to make it so this fund is covered by this levy. This one is, so we've adjusted that. And I yeah. think we've done a pretty good job as far as that goes. This particular last year, we had a, uh, an increase in um, issues related to personnel retirement and all, all because I think we hired another person or something. So we were a little bit short on one of the, uh, one of the funds, maybe several of the funds just by a little bit. So we, you know, we talked about it and I said, look, this is a bill. This is not new spending. So I was all for it. I mean, I, you know, and, uh, you know, we don't want to raise taxes. I mean, none of us do. And, you know, one of the other candidates made a, made a comment about that he would cut the latest tax increase. I mean, that's, that's just low hanging fruit. You know, it, it doesn't mean anything and it's not justified. So, so what have I done to keep the taxes down? I mean, I voted against a, a lot of new spending and things that we'll talk about a little bit later. Things, some of the areas I, I was against and how I voted against it. Thanks, Randy. Mm -hmm. um, if elected, what steps would you take to put the village on a firmer financial footing? Well, cut the spending. You know, I mean, there's a lot, of, there's, I sign off on the invoices that come through, me and Taylor both sign that as part of the uh, finance committee. And you would be amazed what stack of bills comes in every month for things like the fraternal order of the police, the fire, um, the city administrator board, the mayoral board. I mean, there's so many associations you now that we spend money on. Phone bills. I mean, there's so many phone bills in the, in the city. The normal bills, internet bills, electric. I mean, it's so much stuff, but it costs a lot of money to run a city before you even open the doors. So I would take a strong look at all those relationships we have with all the people we do regular business on and try to uh, see places where we might minimize uh, some of those expenditures. Another area I thought about doing, which is kind of a different item, is who in town knows the most about spending for their departments? The employees do. So if we can enable the employees to possibly get a bonus to figure out ways to save us money on things we spend on every day and maybe reward them with a percentage of it, you know, get them involved in the game, maybe that's something that would help out a little bit. I mean, there's a thousand ways we can do things. And, and the more ideas that people come forward with, I think the better off it is. We'll sort through the ones that work and throw out the ones that don't. Okay. Um how do you plan to ensure that our local businesses are are supported while furthering economic development? That's a tough one, and it's a big uh, a big issue right now. Of course, um, I'm I so I work with most of the businesses in town as most as I can. I mean, I'm not going to tell you that I buy every loaf of bread in New Baden, uh, but I do support. Obviously, the Market Center have been the whole time I've lived here. Um, and it's kind of unfortunate that people don't go other or do go other places to buy things because the market center has a lot of fresh items and they can't last forever. So if he buys something and he doesn't sell all of it, he has to throw those things away. And so that drives the cost up for the next person and it just goes on and on. So the higher turnover he's got, the more, uh, more profitable he becomes. So, um, I, I've already talked to some of the biggest uh, employers in town. Don Shoemaker has just spent a lot of money in Breeze uh, and some other towns as well. You know, Don Shoemaker owns Coke Mojo's, if you, for those people that don't know. I talked to him just yesterday about, you know, come spend some of that money in New Baden. You know, we'd love to have a huddle house out at the interstate or, a, uh, 
a different hamburger place or whatever, you know, and uh, I've talked to Brant about opening something along, you know, out there by his place because, you know, they own that property, I believe. At least they used to. Uh, I think they still do. You know, let's put in a strip mall or something because if you look around town, most of the business facilities are rented. I think most of them, except for the uh, where the karate shop was right across from the barbershop. That's open right now. I mean, uh, so let's build some buildings and get some people in there and, and uh, let's collect some tax revenue from somebody other than the citizens. All right, Randy, what do you see as New Baden's top infrastructure improvement projects and what would be the steps you would take to assure they are addressed? Okay, so this is another question about things that need to be done around town. This particular picture is a picture of an expansion joint at some of the concrete roads that are in town. Uh, I urge everybody to drive around town and just look at stuff like this. You don't really notice things until you really stop and look at them. And the problem with this is, I mean, you're going to get cracks in the roads. And the way that you treat those is you inject tar into those cracks so they don't work and get water down inside of them and freeze. If you neglect them, then you end up getting major structure damage here. Now tar doesn't fix that. You have to come in and bulldoze or chisel out this and replace it with new concrete. I urge everybody to take a drive on County Line Road and go to Hillside, make the right turn, make the first left, and take a look at that street. It's called Christopher. That road has been so badly damaged that it's way past anything. It's going to have to be bulldozed out and replaced. That's not cheap. It's a real expensive. So I've been raising heck about this for the last seven or eight months about why don't we do something about this? And you have to have the money to do it. Well, this particular project would be dealt with through a fund called uh, motor fuel tax. It's a dedicated account that comes in that we can only spend on certain things, roads. It's what pays for oil and, and rocking the roads. I think we had like a half a million dollars in this account. We spent about $100,000 a year on oil in the roads. This could have been fixed a long time ago. And uh, it is in the budget now. We just voted on putting uh, $25,000 towards fixing this. But I think the real, that's not going to do all of it. I think the total cost to do all of it is probably a little bit shy of $100,000. I think $80,000 was the last quote we had. But that didn't include some of the work that has to be done. So, uh, you know, this things like this should have been fixed. you got to fix things before they go completely bad. And uh, so I would ensure that Things are brought to the attention of people. Now, I'm going to tell you, some of this stuff was probably brought up by uh, other people in town, and they were probably told that we don't have the money to do it. I mean, that's a common, and maybe we didn't have the money to do it. We have it now, so let's get some of these things fixed. All right, we'll go ahead and move into the com community questions. How important is community involvement to you, and what would you do to increase the residents' involvement in community events? I think this is uh, one of the areas that I really excel in. I'm retired, so I've got time to go to the, uh, you know, the, the events out at the park, the chili cook-off, and uh, the big deal this past Halloween was the park boosters put on a heck of an event. I don't people that don't weren't out there and stuff. The line was all the way from where the horseshoe pits are all the way out to the corner almost. I mean, somebody said it was like a thousand people, which I don't know if that's true or not, but there was a lot of people there and a lot of people enjoyed it. So definitely a shout out to the park boosters, which I'm a part of. Uh, one of the major people in it, I get pretty involved in what's going on in there. Um, I'm also involved or make contributions to the Boy Scouts, the Cub Scouts, the Girl Scouts. I'm a member of the Vietnam Vets of America, the American Legion. Um, I deliver Meals on Wheels. I've been doing that for several years, not just because I'm running for mayor. Um, I also recently, Doug Grinke got me involved in this thing called Clinton County CEO. It's kind of a new thing, hadn't taken effect yet, but it's going to work with uh, high school, I believe just seniors, and it's Clinton County wide, not just Westland. And it, they're gonna have the senior, I believe seniors meet at a location an hour and a half before school starts. Now, I don't know who's gonna get up an hour and a half or more than that because they have to get ready and then drive to this location. And uh, what this does is it trains or kind of teaches the students on how to become 
their own CEOs of their own company. They actually have to form an LLC and then people come in, they, they've got a mentor or something that deals with them every day. And uh, they talk about different ways to, you know, different ideas on how to become, you know, a CEO of their own company. And um, it, it takes them sizable, people can look into it themselves. It takes a sizable investment to do that. And then uh, since I was very successful with my FedEx business and uh, I have a, some skills that I can teach, so I'll be one of the teachers that comes in or mentor or whatever you want to call it and teaches the, the kids on how to, to set up a business and how to manage your people and how to do uh, you know accounting and tax reporting and you know all the things that you have to do to become a business owner. So that's uh, I think that covered all the things that I'm involved in. Um, I mean I don't I don't want to throw dirt, but I'm the only person that's a member of the park board. The park is a big deal. I don't have I don't have kids here. My kids are all grown and gone. So I think other people should be out at the park getting involved in things. It does, it serves a lot of purpose. One, one of the reasons why I even ran for the board in the first place was it irked me to see the ball fields in Trenton full whenever baseball season's going. And you come back to New Bay and there'd be one or two people, one or two fields being utilized. I mean, the kids, I, I play cards with my low league baseball uh, manager when I was seven years old, Bud Rockers. I mean, he's a great guy. I, I mean, I can't say enough about him. Um, so, Go out to the park. Bring your kids out to the park. Play baseball. Get your kids to play baseball. Get off your rears. Get off your cell phones and get involved with your kids. I mean, and then think about it. You go out there and you meet your neighbors. You know, a lot of conflicts that we have on, on Facebook, which that's not the rule of thing, but it seems like it might be. Meet your neighbors. You're going to say things to them in person that you wouldn't say to them on Facebook or maybe, well, the other way around. You'll say things on Facebook face to foot. You know, you establish relationships. That, that's one thing that that really I don't understand about this town is it seems like people don't want to work together. Some people say it's because of the military people we have here. You know, maybe they should get involved, but I can see why they wouldn't want to. Uh, but they should get involved in things. We're, we certainly welcome them here. I mean, you're re Dan's retired military. I am, you know, I mean, there's a lot of retired military people. If you're here and you're active duty, let's get involved. Come down to the Legion. Let's talk to people. Let's get involved. Let's become friends. And I think it'll be best for everybody, you know, so. Thanks, Randy. Um, what specific steps would you take to support or improve the residents' involvement in critical decisions affecting New Baden? New Baden? Well, I think they need to be informed. You know, a lot of the spending that we do, people don't know about it. Um, you know, let's say you want to buy, um, what's the new thing? The, the big thing about the uh, water meter readers Okay. A lot of people know about it. I don't want to waste the time on it because it's pretty complex to explain all the benefits and uh, stuff of it. But so we want to do that. We want to spend whatever it is, half, let's just say half a million. I'm not saying that's the cost of this problem. I'm just using it as an example. So the way it would be approved is it would be at a budget committee meeting. Me, right now, Taylor's the, the committee chairman and uh, Bob Osher. It's us three. We sit down and we discuss things. And then all it takes is two of those three to approve it, and then it goes before the board. All six board members, if they're here, will vote on it. And if they agree to it, then it becomes in the budget. And so when that goes before the people to approve it, it's a small line item on the budget that's very complex. I should have had a picture of our budget process to see. I mean, it's almost hidden. I have a hard time finding it, and I know what I'm looking for. So if nobody comes to the meeting, Nobody ever knows about it. So, I mean, when I talk to people about, you know, we're fixing to spend a half a minute, whatever it is, on uh, the water meters, people go, what? I didn't know nothing about that, you know? Um, you know, another new thing, that, and I wish I had a picture of it, and we just couldn't find, we have one, but we couldn't find it, we tried. They want to build a new public safety building, which would cover the fire department, or I'm sorry, the ambulance department and the police department, okay? You can guess on what something like that costs. You have to purchase the land, which nobody around here wants to give up any land. Um, and then you have to build a building. I mean, you can guess. It, it's not going to be cheap. It's got it. I would just, don't hold me to this, probably in the $2 million range. I don't think that's out of bounds for what they want. And I mean, they want a nice, yeah, you want to build a nice building, sure. But there's some of the items that are on the plans for this, and, and it hadn't been approved. 
but there is two thousand two hundred thousand excuse me dollars in this year's budget to go towards that project do we need a new police department a new um, ambulance building yeah the one we have isn't great but we're a small town we don't have a lot of money I think that we've got bigger projects in town and bigger bigger priorities in town than that so I mean, if you're going to ask me to approve spending that kind of money when we've got people in town that have a hard time paying their water bills, paying their electric bills, you know, the older people that are on fixed incomes that can't go out and get a second job if they need more money. That's the people I worry about, you know. Everything's going up. So we need to keep our, our we need to be very smart about how we spend money. That, I think, is my number one uh, driving factor for running for mayor, really. Thanks, Randy. Um, diversity, inclusion, and belonging are increasingly important topics. If anything, what would you do to improve race relations in our village? I don't really see it as being a problem, to be honest with you. Um, if somebody does have a problem, and I, you know, I'm, maybe it might happen out at school because you know the young kids are going to talk, and they're you know they don't always make the best decisions in life. Their mouths you know kind of get carried away sometimes. I don't really see it as being a problem. I mean, I think we welcome all races in town pretty good. Now, if I'm wrong on that and I'm mayor and you feel like you're being discriminated against, you can call me privately or anonymously or whatever you think and inform me on what the uh, what your concern is and I'd be more than happy to, to address it any which way I could. Now, if you're talking about it in the workplace, that definitely won't be, dealt, uh, won't be approved by me and it will be dealt with uh, quickly. Thanks, Randy. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, we're going to go ahead and move into the individual questions. These questions were submitted by um, residents um, and addressed to individual candidates. Okay. Okay. So the first one is, do you see yourself as someone who works well with others? If so, describe a specific situation when this occurred. Uh, could I be better at it? Yes. But there's two sides to a story. How you deal with the people you work with may sometimes depend on how they are. Are they totally invested in what their job is? Are they working hard? Are they giving us their best effort? If I see that in and the employees, if I think that's what we're mainly talking about is working well with others. Uh, I mean, if, if you're that, I'll be all for you. I'll, I'll support you. I'll back you any possibly way I can. Um, I'm not going to be silent when it comes to dealing with other board members that don't want to hear my voice. All right. Okay, Randy, your final question for the night is, um, are you able to put your personal relationships to the side in order to objectively address the issues in our community? Recently, there is a big back and forth over um, my relationship with, with Brent. I mean, basically, Brent came out and said that, that he would support, he didn't name me, he said a candidate in town that wouldn't pull my liquor license if, if I was if he was mayor, and uh, I told Brant personally. I said, "Look, I'll fight for you in any way I can, as I would any other member or resident or business owner in town." I don't know. I didn't know Brant care till a couple weeks ago. I knew his dad. I was in my class in high school. I wouldn't tell you he's my best friend, but I'm, I didn't have anything against him, or I think he didn't have anything against me. I knew his mom very well. I knew his grandma very well, and I still consider one of my best friends today, Bonnie Har. Um, I've known her since I was, you know, hanging out at the tavern with my dad when I was a kid. Um, so I told Brant face to face, I said, look, Brant, I'll support you. I'll fight for you anything I can. But if you're not going to, you know, if, if your place is going to turn into a, a scene from Roadhouse, I'll be just as strong against you. And it doesn't necessarily take me bait. And I, I would think it, his biggest problem, if he doesn't do things properly, would be the St. Clair County guys would probably get him just like they shut down the massage parlor at the end of town so you know I'll be your best friend when it comes to helping you but uh, uh, you're not getting a get out of jail free pass from me I can assure you that um, we've we've offered um, the next part of this is that we've um, each of the candidates are being offered a, a chance to have a closing statement and to maybe address anything that we didn't ask you directly okay. um, so um, we'll go ahead and let you do your closing statement okay so uh, in closing, I just want to talk about a couple of things real quick. Uh, once again, I want to thank Mayor for taking your time and Dan and Patty for, uh, for all the things we're doing tonight. It, I think it's going to be very well received. Hopefully my presentation will be well received as well. 
Uh, just a couple things I can talk about before we wrap up. Uh, one more picture. I don't know if people know what this is, but this is a picture of a trailer that's in the trailer park uh, on 9th Street, just north of the railroad tracks, like three or four houses north of the railroad track. Um, now what's odd about this trailer is that this trailer has got rats running out of it. The neighbors complained to me about rats running out of it because this isn't really a greatest picture, but I encourage people to go drive by it and take a look at what I'm talking about. This is a trailer. There's a lot next to it that's overgrown. The city has owned this trailer for over, is it a year now? I don't know how long it's been, but I know it's been, I've been complaining about it for at least six months. This is something that the city owns and the city should take care of. If we expect our residents to maintain their properties and follow the guidelines and ordinances that the town has, then the, the city certainly should set the example and this is not the case. I've been raising heck about it at meetings a lot. I finally quit talking about it because I wouldn't get anywhere on it. And, and I don't understand what the delay is. This isn't nothing that our public works guys are going to take care of. We're going to farm it out to somebody else. So all we have to do is get bids on it or whatever. We, you know, it, it should have been done. It should have been done months ago. So um, this is just one of the things, one of the reasons why I'm running. Um, I have another picture that we're going to switch to now that talks about another area. So if you want to pause. Okay, so this is another picture of some of the items that need to be... Uh, Fix a new bait, and this is on Thuvano. I'm sure everybody's familiar with this. Uh, after it rains, it floods pretty bad um, and doesn't always drain right away. So this is concrete here. This is property lines here with uh, uh, right-of-ways, uh, people's right-of-ways that go through people's yards. They've grown trees and all this, put buildings on the property lines and stuff like that that pro uh, have prevented us from doing anything with this. We talked about it. Uh, I think when Mike Bolt was here, we sent out letters to the property owners on both sides of this. I, that's what I was told. I'm not sure that that's what happened or not, but we told them that they had to remove these items so we could come in and, and do some work to this. Um, nothing's done. Nothing's been done the last year. Um, this is something that I think is going to get taken care of here, I think, um, here in the near future. So uh, this, once again, it's just one thing, something that should have been taken care of a long time ago. So uh, that's the last, uh, you know, one of the, Flooding is a major problem in town, and I, I, I can't promise you that I'm going to be able to fix it, you know, in my eight years that I'm mayor. That's a joke. <laughs> I try to be funny sometimes. Try, I think, is the key word. Um, you know, I, th this takes money, and I, I can't promise you that stuff like this is going to get fixed. We just have to sit, uh, get some informed, uh, make some informed decisions, and prioritize what things need to get fixed in town. I mean, you can fix this flooding stuff, but if it goes downstream, and floods the next thing down the road, you know, it's just a chain reaction. So uh, this is another one of the things that need to get repaired. Okay, can we pause for just a second? Okay, so in closing, I just want to say that, you know, there's obviously we got a lot of problems in town um, that need to be taken care of. You know, it's nothing money can't fix, but, uh, you know, we have a lot of good things going on in town too. I mean, sometimes I focus on the negative and that's, you know, been an issue with me all my life. I'm not going to say it's one of my things I, um, I'm proud of, but I, I, I'm aware of it. But uh, you know, I, I just want to say we just we need to work together. I, you know, if I'm elected, Taylor's going to be on the board with me as a board member for another two years. I can work with Taylor. I think he's a nice, young, and I'm not saying that in a negative um, frame of mind. Uh, he is very intelligent. Uh, I've talked to him. We've had some disagreements, you know, but we've always been able to. Uh, get along fair, fairly well. Um, all I can say is if you are happy with the way things are going now, and and I'm not blaming any one person, it's, you know, I, I don't want to, we just have to do better. If you like things the way they are right now, then I would say vote for Taylor. If you don't, if you have some things that you think I can do a better job of with the experience that I've got, and, uh, you know, the, the, the tools that I bring to the table, then vote for me, and I'd appreciate your vote if and when that day comes. So thank you very much.